Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ulyssia if you're new here. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about my 10 month exclusively pumping update. I'm going to be discussing the challenges I've had, mistakes I've made, and why I almost gave up on exclusively pumping. So if you're interested, just keep on watching. Let me preface this video by saying that exclusively pumping has been the most challenging thing that I have ever done. Let's start from the very beginning. Two weeks after my baby was born, I decided to just go ahead and exclusively pump. And if you want to know the main reasons why I decided to do that, check out this video right here. But two weeks after my baby was born, I decided to go ahead and exclusively pump. It was just so much easier for me. I was less stressed out and I wasn't worried about her getting enough milk so that she can actually gain weight. And at the time, I was producing anywhere between 40 to 50 ounces per day. And I was pumping about six times. I was pumping anywhere between six to seven times per day because in the first three months of exclusively pumping or breastfeeding in general, you do have to um, feed your baby every two to three hours to maintain your supply because your milk is still regulated within that first three months. After the three month period, I did drop down to about five pumps per day because six to seven pumps per day was not realistic, especially with the newborn and making sure I had enough sleep throughout the day. So I decided to drop down to five pumps per day. Once I realized that my body was able to handle dropping a pump without being super engorged or getting any clogged ducts, I decided to drop again. So around four to five months, I decided to go ahead and drop down to four pumps per day. And at the time I was still producing about 40 ounces of milk per day. So I didn't lose out on too much milk. But what really caused my milk supply to drop was when my period came back around five months. My supply completely just dropped in half. I freaked out because I didn't know if I would be able to bring my supply back up so that I could continue to feed her. Because at the time, I was pumping enough to feed her throughout the day and have milk left over for the next day as well. I did have a milk stash in the freezer. But I wanted my baby to have fresh milk daily. So I really worked my butt off to get that supply back up. At this point, I was freaking out. I was going through Facebook groups that I was in for exclusively pumpers. I Googled, I went on Pinterest to figure out how can I bring my supply back up after getting your period back. Because again, this has never happened to me to the point where my supply completely dropped in half and it was dropping every day that I was on my period. So I came across this Facebook post from this girl and she said she tried magnesium and calcium supplements to help her body um, regulate when she's on her period. So I tried it out for a month and I instantly noticed a difference in my milk supply around my period. So I decided to take it on a daily basis. But the problem was my supply still wasn't where it was previously, which is around 40 to 50 ounces per day. So I started to power pump. If you ever want to increase your supply very rapidly, then I would definitely recommend power pumping, which you can do in one or two different ways. First way is by having your normal pumping session periods, and you will wait one hour after that pumping period to go ahead and power pump. With power pumping, you pump for 20 minutes, take a 10 minute break, pump for 10 minutes, take a 10 minute break, and then pump for 10 minutes again. And after that, you will have your regular pumping session again. You can choose to do that how many times you want to throughout the day. And a second way is by replacing a regular pumping session with a power pump session. My personal preference is to replace a regular pumping session with a power pumping session so that I'm able to increase a supply for the next pump. I also made sure that I was drinking about a gallon of water a day. And if I couldn't drink a full gallon of water, I would drink body armor, which is very good for increasing your supply because it has coconut milk in it, which keeps you hydrated. I also made sure that I had a full meal because let's be honest, when you're swiftly pumping, taking care of your baby and your house, it's very easy to forget to eat. I still do it to this day, so I have to remind myself to eat. One of the biggest mistakes that I made in the very beginning was not pumping long enough. I would basically stop pumping whenever the pump turned off, especially with my morning pump. But I later realized that I was losing out on milk because I was still having letdowns when the pump turned off at 30 minutes. So I decided to pump for a longer time period, which for my morning pump is usually about 45 minutes to an hour. The morning pump I usually get anywhere between 18 to 22 ounces of milk. It could be a lot more, but again, I only have like an hour to spare. So I try to at least go for 45 minutes in the minimum and the max. If I have time, I'll go for a full hour. It's also important to make sure that you have the correct size breast shields, which is also another mistake that I made in the very beginning. After making sure that I was doing all these things, my supply finally went back up again only for it to drop again this time it dropped way lower than 50% I would say I was 
producing about 25% of what I normally produce and that is because I had a clogged up and if you guys have ever had one before then you know exactly how bad that crap hurts and at this point I honestly just wanted to stop pumping I was like you know what I'm over this I can't do this anymore I got my supply up only for it to go back down again and I was trying not to stress myself out over it and I was just like you know what I have enough milk in the freezer to last it for a few months I could just do that and stop but I would not allow myself to quit that easily because of a clog because I have a goal of 12 months minimum and 18 months max you know unless of course my supply just completely just dries up or if I fall pregnant with my second baby before then so instead of giving up I decided you know what I'm going to get through this like I did before don't stress out just will salt and think about how you can and get your supply to go back up again so back to the drawing board again this time I started to do breast compressions and I also started to incorporate sunflower lecithin back into my regimen so I had my prenatals I had the calcium and magnesium supplements and sunflower lecithin and on top of that I was also using heating pads taking hot showers and hand expressing whatever it took to get that clot out I did it and after two and a half three days I finally got it out and I was and you know things went back to normal my supply went back up again only for it to come right back again but on the opposite side two weeks later and I was like why does this keep freaking happening to me why do I keep getting these clogs I don't understand what am I doing wrong so again I had to go back to the drawing board and I had to work through this freaking clog again just to make sure that my supply does not drop too low once again I was able to clear the clog duct after releasing that second clot I really thought to myself do I really want to continue on with this because it really hurts and your nipples are very sensitive so you have to push through that pain to try to get the clot out in order to get your supply to increase again all that said I have officially made it to 10 months of a two sleep pump it was hard but I did it and I'm probably going to do it again with my next baby. I'm just happy to say that I finally made it to 10 months exclusively pumping despite all the challenges that I had in the beginning with my supply dropping, the clot I would still do it again for my next baby. I just feel like exclusively pumping still allows me to give my baby the best. A lot of people don't like to exclusively breastfeed because they feel like they're constantly attached to a breast pump. In my case, that was not the issue at all. In the first three months, don't get me wrong, you do have to make sure that you're pumping consistently every two to three hours while your breast milk is regulating. But after that, you're free to basically go out and live your life as you did before you started to exclusively pump. So I'm down to about three pumps per day now. I'm still able to have my self-care days and hang out with my friends and go on date nights with my husband and not have to worry about pumping because I set myself up in a way where in the very beginning I went hard on on pumping to the point where my milk when it regulated I was still an over producer so I'm still not making as much as I was previously but I'm still making more than what she needs so I still have that flexibility to actually leave the house without the pump hey guys I just realized while I was editing this video that I actually lost the ending of this video but I actually want to hear from you guys. Let me know what challenges you had while exclusively breastfeeding down in the comments below. And don't forget if you like this video to give me a thumbs up. Hit subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in my next video.